I'm going to mute myself while I make coffee. I overslept. Sorry. You don't even have to tell us that. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, where's the mute button? Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to share my screen. How's that? Good. Uh, screen one. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, uh, did I share? I'm sharing now. Is that shared? No. Did I just yes. stop sharing? No, it is shared. Okay. Yes. Everybody see that? Yes. Okay. So um, sharing the agenda. Is it is it readable? I'm sorry. I'm getting pinged here. There we go. Um, yes, it's fine, David. Thank you. Okay. So review of the minutes, item number one of the March 19th Architectural Licensing Board. Uh, does, are there any comments um, regarding the minutes? Maybe we should maybe we should make a motion, a move to approve the minutes of the March 19th meeting. Do we have a second? Second, Phil. Com uh, comments? Adjustments, changes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. David, you motioned first. <laughs> yeah, myself okay. and then Angela seconded. Okay, so I think Angela that's a- uh, Angela second, okay, thank you. No, Phil seconded. No, Phil. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry, Phil seconded. We're so <laughs> similar. It didn't really matter, so. <laughs> yeah, you sound the same. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry about I that. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, so I believe it passed unanimously. Um, comments or concerns of any person present today? If I could, David, I think, um, uh, Bob, was there supposed to be some additions to the, um, did we have yes. an amended agenda? Do we have that via email or? We, I was we're, going to, we're going to we're going to make some additions to the agenda. Right. David's going to okay. But beyond that, I figure we could do that under you know before we get to old business. Um, I don't hear any other concerns. Anybody else? Any anybody on the chat function, Bob? That we should be um, uh, recognizing. No. Okay, I'm going to uh, switch to the board report. Item three, DCP investigations. Janita, do you wanna make any statements here <clears throat> to the board regarding this report? We only have the one page report, which is the, the back from 1118 uh, through the current period. So, is this correct? We, we have 10 items now? Yes. All are open, everything else has been? Yes. Legal has, and again, I don't know that there's anybody from legal, but since I did the last report for you for March, um, when I run the report, everything else is information <coughs> that you've already seen and this is what's left that's current. Well, the top one, 202282 was just recently closed and everything else um, is remaining what's open. So there've been no complaints at all since No October. new complaint. Um, no, there, there has, there has not been a new complaint 
submitted. Okay. Because if it was, it would show up underneath the uh, 2022 16 one. Right. And and what does that mean, DCP inquiry on number 10? So it is, it's an internal complaint, <laughs> kind of. Um, well, Mr. Barkin's controlling the screen. So um, usually a DCP inquiry, something, it could be on an application, it could be something that was brought to our attention um, by somebody within the, could have been from Richard Hurlburt, it could have been Department of Labor, might have had some interest in something. And we, the department, become the complainant. Okay. If they're anonymous, it's anonymous. It fits on my occupational side that we become the complainant when we do a site inspection and we have violations. Or it would be a DCP inquiry when Department of Labor Apprenticeship Training sends us a notification that, hey, you should be checking out this contractor because here's, here's one of the uh, former apprentices saying that they were never registered. You know, or the board, um, this wasn't the case in your case, but sometimes the board will review an application and find out that the applicant actually has been um, acting as and performing as an electrician or an architect or an engineer or some in some capacity where they needed a license, they're admitting to you, oh yeah, I've worked this many years without a license and now I want credit for it. <laughs> so those will also be, become DCP inquiries. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry for the confusion. I, I seem to have this often. Things that have been referred to legal don't show up on this report now anymore. Is that is that what we're seeing? No, sir. If you look in the column referred to legal, you will see when so they were all, referred. So many of oh, so these have been referred to legal. Yes, sir. Okay, so these are so so we would need Paulette to give us sort of a status, not without detail as to, and, and I, I don't, she, is Paulette on? She is not. I, I did send an email to her to remind her Wait, about I the meeting. I just got something. I just pinged her too. Okay. She, is? she has a hearing next week, but she has a lot to prepare. I mean, um, it would be good if she joined us for a few minutes. Do we agree? Oh, this is Pamela Brown, uh, Director of Investigations. I don't know that Paulette would be able to give you a status on these complaints because they could be come before you as a hearing. So when well, I mean, she could give us a, a, a confidential status, we have six reports and we're actively working on three or four of them, right? I mean, not without giving us any detail and not asking for any detail on the reports. Correct. She would not be able to give you details because then that would. Yeah, no, I think we understand that. Yeah. I think at the last meeting we had asked for you know, to understand why there's four of them from four of them from 2018 and what, you know, why that was taking so long. All right, I'm asking well, 2019 in her case, they, they, they were came in in 2018 and then they were referred to her. I, I've asked her to two join years us. ago. Yeah. I've asked her to join us briefly if she can. So, uh, Bob, if you could let me know if she comes back on, and I think maybe we could move to other agenda items and kind of le leave this open for the moment. Okay, I will. Okay. Um, so, uh, Janita, would you like to add anything else or, 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 or Pamela uh, regarding this before we move on temporarily to other issues? No, I just have a question. You're going to leave the item open, but it's going to be item open for legal, not for investigations to go back to this report later. Just want to know if we need to be on for the full meeting when yeah, until that, fall that, it comes back on. Well, unless you have anything else to add to this, no, that would be the intention. Is it? Does the rest okay. of the board agree? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. 
And in response to Chairman Barkin's question, no, I don't have anything else to answer unless any you or any of the other uh, board members have any questions um, for me that do not re involve the files and legal. No, we don't. And, and thank you again for updating us. Uh, this is it's a helpful report. It looks like you know things have really gotten cleaned up quite a bit uh, over the ensuing months. <clears throat> so thank you. You're quite welcome. Thank you, Janita. Thank You're you. You're quite Pamela. welcome, all, and um, thank have you, a Janita. good Memorial thank holiday. You. you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, in terms of uh, additional agenda items, uh, under under new business, I guess it would be uh, item. Um, what would it be? Six D. We want to add a discussion about resolutions for the annual business meeting. Six uh, E attendance at the annual business meeting. Six F member stand down for a legal um, uh, re review of, of one of the outstanding um, complaints. And six G uh, a memo regarding uh, uh, continuing education units to uh, uh, to all current license holders. <clears throat> what else did I miss, uh, Angela? Um, I have... Six, yeah, six A. I think Bob has some additional addition, candidates. Yeah, we have an additional candidate, uh, David, for uh, initial registration. Thomas Lane, um, architect, ARI license number one four nine two four. I'd like to request if the board would add, consider adding Mr. Lane to the list of candidates for initial licensure. And we need to vote on all of these agenda um, additions, including the addition of 6A? Yes. All right. Uh, I can move to add Thomas Lane to 6A and all of the other aforementioned items. Do we have a second? Second. So. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Not any any opposed abstentions. Not hearing any. I assume it's unanimous. Okay. Um, I Paulette did confirm that she'd be joining us. Uh, Bob, is she is she on yet? Hang on one second. Let me see. She is on. Uh, as a uh, okay, Paulette as a can panelist, be, she'll be joining. Uh, okay. All right. Let me go. Let me. People still see my screen, right? Yeah. If you could. Uh, yes. All right, Paulette, are you there? She she's muted. Attorney Anand, unmute. please unmute yourself. Unmute. I did. Okay, thank you so Things much. Things drive me crazy. I can't get out half the time. <laughs> thank you for Bob. <laughs> Hi, everybody. You're Hi, Paula. Thanks for there jumping on. Okay, you're on. Thank you for jumping on, Paula. You're welcome, David. Uh, well, and recognizing you're you're in the midst of of some legal preparations and how stressful and time. Uh, the time required for that. We just want to talk briefly. If you can see my screen, um, there's uh, um, out of the existing, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven referred to legal. We know we, we don't ask or, or want any detail on this, but just sort of more of a, you know, kind of status report as to, you, you know, where things are. Can you can you um, bring it up for me? Zoom zoom in for me so I can see it better. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me. Is 
Is that better? I mean, it's as good as I can do on. Yeah, okay. All right, so. One, I don't, I don't see 2018.55 on here. Hmm. So the case that's going to be going to compliance meeting with a step down, and that date we picked is um, June 21st, by the way. Oh, 20, not the 24th. 21st. Um, yeah, the 21st. Okay. Let me just double check my calendar right now because I did put a hold on, um, hold the date on my calendar. Hold on one sec. Um, calendar. Yeah, it is June 21st. Um, so that's uh, the case is 2018.55. I don't see it on this list. Um, but anyway, that's, that's a little bit of concern then. For well, I, I don't. I, I won't. I won't go as so far as to say concern. I mean, you know, we're humans. It for some reason could have been um, mistakenly left off. But anyways, um. So I now have two interns. Oh, thank God. I have two um, legal interns <laughs> One started already. And so far I'm feeling rock star in these people. So they're gonna be helping me with moving through these cases. So that's why I have a compliance meeting already set up for 2018-55. So I'm gonna be like signing these cases to the interns for them to review and just move on them, whether it's dismissing it because because, you know, I think I, I mentioned this before that sometimes with these cases that have to do with um, advertising, like there's one particular case where it's like a he said, she said kind of thing. And I'm like, I don't have time for that if there's no proof. I don't have time for that. And I don't think the board has time for that. Right. And if it's someone that says, oh, he told me that he's an architect. And then there's nothing on their website or nothing in their documentation. I'm dismissing that case just so you know, because I would never bring a case like that forward. So they're going to review the cases. They're going to see if they have merit to move forward. If they do, if it's a licensee, then they'll schedule, we'll schedule a compliance meeting with a step down. And if it's an unlicensed person, then they'll draft a, an administrative complaint and that will come before you guys. So that's the plan for these older cases. Uh, pull out if, if something was so thin that that there was no evidence why would it even move to legal why would it have is that just the, the normal process that it would come out of the investigations if it was so inconclusive you know no no advertising would it typically auto automatically move through the through your your group so in fairness to the investigators who are not attorneys i mean they do their best like you know keith does his best to based on the information that he's getting from the respondent and based on sometimes the respondent never res responds right and so he has information just from one side and so based on that he may send it up to us and that's why that's our job in legal to sort of say okay i have now this this report let me see if there is sufficient information or evidence in there for me to move forward with an enforcement action. So that's why sometimes these, these cases may come up to, to, to legal. And then we might kick it back and say, hey, can you get us some more information? This is what's missing or dismiss it because it's just not a case that we would, you know, bring, bring forward. Okay. okay. Uh, does the board have any question, further questions for Paulette regarding, uh, the, you know, our discussion about those that have been referred to legal? No. no. Hi, Lauren, good to see you. <laughs> it's been a while. Okay. Um, I want to skip if we could for, so I think we're, we're complete now with uh, item, um, uh, item three and oh well and item four but I want to skip to a new agenda item and I don't know which it ended up as um, regarding a step down member for a here a hearing is that what the right term Paulette no it's a compliance meeting compliance meeting uh, scheduled for 621 can we what what number is that 
um, Bob. I, I don't know. That's, that's the first I've heard of it, David. No, no, it was one of the ones I threw out there. Oh. Um, 6E. We had resolutions, ABM attendance, and step and the step down uh, for a member. I said I think it said stand down or something, but I've stepped down. All right, so yeah, I don't, you know, David, when you when you wrote those off, I didn't I didn't catch all of them. Uh, we went up to six G. All right, so, so however we want to. Um, all right, so we had uh, six. The, the agenda, the agenda ends it just with stops 6C. at six six C, right? Right, correct. So, so six, up six D is resolutions, six E is uh, the ABM attendance, six F is the one I want to discuss now, which is step down member, and six G is the CE memo to um, uh, uh, for for a licensed architect. So let's skip to six F. Right, and um, Paulette, just confirm what you need. You need one of the three architect members of the board to step down. Is that correct? Yes, if they're interested in participating. Um, I'm. I cannot participate. I will be on vacation and out of town. So oh, I, you'll, you'll, So then you are my person. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Um, I have done this, so I don't know, Phil, if you had done this in your prior time on the board. I know I don't think Angela's ever stepped down. No, I've done it. I've done it on this board. Yes. I did it not that oh, you did. last year. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Is, yeah. it, is it an in person or is, is it an online, virtual? Online. Um, so I, I uh, you having already done it, I, I would offer it first refusal to um, Angela. But I also recognize that Angela has many other responsibilities as in her roles at an other organization. So um, what what's the time frame? Nine o'clock. Um, so I don't think we need more than an hour. So nine to ten. I usually schedule it for two hours, but it it could be as quick as it really depends on what information the person is presenting. Okay, I would I would be interested in seeing how that process goes. Do I need to prepare anything in advance? Yes. What I'll do is um, once I send out the notice to the respondent, then I will send you a copy of the compliance meeting notice, the investigation report, and the evidence that the investigator has. And at this point, will you just let me know in your correspondence to me the level of um, um, confidence of the uh, of the issue does it does it stay? Yeah, I'm stepping down, right? So I assume I can't discuss right. so it with means, anybody. Right. So that means that you have to keep everything um, from the compliance meeting confidential. Ju just you will get the information. You can't discuss it with the board because if it does go forward to a hearing, then you would have to recuse yourself. Okay. Now. Understanding that we have a legal expert on our board, it's I, I assume, uh, David, you said it had to be an architect member stepping down, and I am interested in learning about this process, but for future reference, um, it's not possible for one of our public members to be participate in this type of process? It's my understanding typically not, because usually these issues have to do specifically with um, professional practice and things that I would say you know, the professional members are best able to. So you, you, your legal representation is in the form of the, you know, of, of, of Paulette is advising on legal issues, um, but I, it's the expertise of, of, of the, 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 the member board member, the, the professional member board member to assist with, uh, you know, standard of care issues or whatever is gonna come up out of this. Okay. Yeah. And I, I haven't done one of them, Angela, I agree with David. I think that, um, it really needs to be one of the architects because a lot of the conversation revolves around kind of knowing what we do in architecture and other things. And so I think that that it probably does need to be one of the architects. That helps me frame my um, review of the materials. Thank you. 
the other thing I would add to that, can you guys hear me? Because I know. Yep, barely. Slow, yeah. Um, Zoom doesn't work very well in terms of volume for me. Um, as out, as counsel uh, by trade, I cannot provide legal advice. That's right. So uh, that's why Paula is involved anyway. So I wouldn't be able to do what you were asking anyway. So that just makes a nice, clean, defined line. <laughs> Right. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah. Okay, I'll await the invitation. Twenty first, June twenty first, Monday at nine a.m. Yes. All right. Thank and you, I Angela. don't believe there's any board action required on that. I mean, we've there's, there's no, no vote by the board for. No. Right. Okay. Thank you, Paulette. Is there anything you'd like to add to our meeting while you're here? No. <laughs> <laughs> Then, um, <laughs> then you can bail out now. Um, and thank you, Paula. Uh, thank, thank you. you. So, thank, thank you for joining have, us. And have, have a, nice a great holiday. weekend. Thank yeah. you, Paula. Thank you, you too. Enjoy thank your you. holiday, David. Bye. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um, back to the agenda. Um, Update on proposed changes to Connecticut statutes, chapter 390 architects. Um, David, I have not heard anything from Leslie or anything from the department on that to date. So I guess we have to keep it open. I, I yeah. mean, um, was there any an was there any interim discussion? I, I mean, were you able to because I you know you you had to take some 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 time off in between. Was there any com communication on this item? Uh, not that I'm aware of, David. I'm, I will email um, Leslie and find out what's going on. Like I said, I have I was out for a while, and uh, there's nothing that came to my attention so far. But I will I'll pursue it. And 5B as well, I, I haven't gotten yes. any kind of clarity from, uh, 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 and I thought I reached out to DCP staff, but um, I'll verify that and uh, um, see if we can get some discussion going between DAS and DCP. I'm just making a note to myself here. Um, Okay. Um, new business. So we've added a six candidate. Is it uh, Mr. Taylor? Is it? No, Tom, Mr. Thomas Lane. Oh, sorry. Thomas Lane. Right. Uh, architect number six. license number in our system 14924. Okay. Uh, and, 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 and where did that, that Mr. Mr. Lane got uh, passed the exam? Uh, is it a traditional Correct. method? Yes, it is. We have a, we have a uh, NCARB council record with a recommendation to register from the NCARB, compliant with experience requirements, education requirements, applying for licensure. Um, it, go ahead. No, my, it's, it's a traditional council record. Right. I was, it was reviewed by me as complete. Uh, as always, it's got a recommendation from MenCarb to register to the board. And uh, and the, of the other other five candidates, I know one, uh, Mr. Moore, was one of was was uh, uh, a candidate that we permitted to sit for the exams in Connecticut, who Correct. did not have the 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 the, the traditional uh, uh, council record. His was, his was an unbound record. Um, and, uh, we have, uh, the other three, the other four, uh, Tyler, Harriet, Catherine, Hobart, Peter Kaczynski and, and Mehmet Sabri Sahin are all sort of, uh, the traditional, That's sorry correct. about the ringing yeah. phone. I have to ignore that for the time being. Yeah, they, they all have, uh, one, two, three, and five candidates all have the, uh, compliant Council records from NCARB green covers. Okay, thank you. Um, I, 
David, you're muted. I'm sorry, thank you. The phone stopped ringing. Um, Mr. It, it, I just there, there was a Peter Kaczynski that practiced architecture in the New Haven area for many years. I feel you might remember the name. Um, yeah, but, uh, I think this must be, I tried to see if this was a junior. Uh, I would say it's a junior or it's a grandson. Uh, it could be a grandson, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, the name is familiar for sure. Kaczynski is, uh, yeah, we're not renowned, but yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Been practicing for a he, long time. He did a lot of work in my, where I, where my hometown. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we don't know that, but it's an interesting question. Um, now, is Mr. Moore uh, in the, in the uh, uh, attending? I see he, him he, online. Yeah. Hi, Brian. Can, can, can you possibly elevate him to 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 and, and see if he would like to say any words or we could say, speak directly to him? To... And Mr. Lane right, is here as well. The panel. Uh, Mr. Lane is here as well, too. Right. Got it. Uh, why don't we start okay, with they've both Mr. been promoted. Mr. Moore, uh, would you like would you like to say anything to the board? We we congratulate you. We haven't actually acted yet, so so you have to be careful what you say. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just thanks for the opportunity. Uh, despite the non accredited degree, I'm, I'm glad I got these exams done in good time and with a lot of success. Uh, so I'm just looking forward to practicing Connecticut with with uh, the condition of approval. Um, how, how long did it take you to sit to complete your exams out of curiosity? Six months. Six months. A model candidate. Hear that? <laughs> Six months. People uh, take years to do that. You did it six <laughs> months. Good job. Thank you. Uh, I was very lucky. Mr. Lane, any any comments before we act on your? No. All right. So uh, motion to approve. I'll move. Second. I'll second, Phil. Okay, Angela, uh, seconded by Phil. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That's unanimous. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck. Congrats. And with great, great power comes great responsibility. 6B, applications for last year by waiver examination. The following individuals were approved under section 21A8 of general statutes by the Department of Consumer Protection for licensing as architects in the state of Connecticut on the basis of waiver of examination with an NCARB certificate record of direct endorsement. And it's quite a long list. Um, several directs, most and our NCARB, um, we have, oh my goodness, 68. And there's no additions to this. Is that correct, Bob? Uh, that's correct. But just for the board's information, uh, well, it, it wasn't, I mean, after the agenda went out, um, I'm going to put the, the next batch here on the, on the next meeting's agenda. We've probably got another 35 or 40 that, you know, they're coming in. You know, uh, like locusts. Like yes, locusts. they are. <laughs> yes, they are. It's good for the state. I, it's but, wonderful for the state that we have so much work going on, but this should be going to Connecticut architects, in my opinion. <laughs> Agreed. The, the vast majority are all coming through the NCARB. We have a few direct, but, but you know, 97% are all NCARB, blue cover. But it's just a matter of, you know, reviewing all of them and, you know, there's, there's a lot coming in. <laughs> and I have to give an awful lot of credit to my coworkers that, uh, took over while I was out for this uh, for that period of time uh, in April um, for doing all this. Thank you. Well, I mean, you know, in terms of who does the work, uh, you know, the state makes its efforts to keep things local, but uh, uh, you know, these are private, probably private clients and Are they affiliated with Connecticut firms? Like, are they? Who knows? Yeah, we don't know. So you have, over. Do you have any way of knowing whether, I mean, I saw Alabama, which seems. 
a little on, you know, New York, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. Well, yeah, but what, mean, what, what that is, to, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, yeah, I mean, they don't necessarily need to be, and most likely they're not, which is why they're getting licensed here. I mean, um, we all do work in other states for sure. So, The states that I list on the agenda, that's the state that the candidate was first licensed in. That's typically what we put as state of record. Right. You know, some of those candidates are licensed in 25 states, more than that. Um, but you know, NCARB lists them in the order they became licensed and they're, they're base state to us. We consider, that's what I list on the agenda. Oh, okay. So it could be someone that was originally licensed in Alabama, but is now in Rhode Island. Oh, absolutely. Right. The majority okay. probably all are. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Or Guam, you know, you just don't know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> District of uh, Columbia. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, move on. 6C, this is uh, for uh, informational purposes, the applications for corporate practice of architecture. The department approved the following applications under section 21A-8 of the general statutes, ADA Architects based in Lakewood, Ohio, BKP Architects in Philadelphia, Joseph Seapot, AIA PC in Brantford, Life Care Design in Hartford, Meyer Design Group in Hartford, Manhattan Studio Architecture in Manhattan, and Martin Abenazi in Hamden. And uh, several of these candidates um, were as a result of um, determinations made by uh, Department of Administrative Services, Construction Services for active contracts where applications were made, uh, but those, those uh, firms did not have a corporate practice of architecture. The reason I mention this to board members is to is to remind our colleagues, and AIA uh, can be very helpful with this, that when you decide to establish a PC or an LLC, you are practicing as a corporation under state statute and you have to then apply, if you wanna use that as your title, you have to apply for corporate uh, uh, licensure under our statutes. If you're not, then you're not permitted to use that title and you wouldn't have those protections. David, there's actually two more on the next page if you want to read them all. I'm sorry. Thank you, Phil. So Keep David, is that why I, I know Joe Seapot, he's been practicing for years. So he's just recently formed or, or established as a, a PC or an LLC. I forget what it was. So that's I, I, why I, the change? I, I presume, I don't know. Okay. I don't know what his history is. The thing is that there was some confusion that people thought, well, if I'm a sole proprietor, but I have a PC, a professional corporation, maybe I don't need to hold a corporate license, but that's just not the case. Okay. You don't have to like get licensed through the state. I mean, because there's two steps, right? One is through, you, you, the first is to establish your, your corporation through the secretary of state. And then once you have that, then, or in parallel, you need to get a corp, well, you'd have to have that first, and then you'd apply for a corporate license through, through, uh, through us. Thank you. And at the last meeting, we did talk with um, uh, Paulette about what type of advisement DCP can issue um, to communicate the information about this requirement for corporate practice. Well, we just confirmed that, you know, sole proprietor or a single member LLC is still applies. There's no question about yes. that. There's, there, was, there was no debate. There was there was no gray area as far as as far as DCP is concerned. Right. No, I think we were trying to figure out how to that the the this really just results, as you said, of lack of understanding of the statutes. Um, and so, what 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 could DCP or or somebody do to to let the architectural community know about this? That's what was on the meeting minutes anyway. What type of advisement can the board or department do to communicate so, so this information? So Gina is advising that we, that, 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 that I, which is good, <laughs> uh, by June 10th, write an article due by June 6th on this okay. for AIA. Okay, <laughs> I will do that, Gina. Thank you. That sounds good. <laughs> I think I said, I, I think I offered that before and failed to do it. It's typical, typical failure. Um, okay, 
Um, but you know, it, 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 it's again, good for the state and it's, it's, it's actually good for, uh, for those um, practicing to have that, you know, to, if that's what they want to do is, is, to, is to have some certain corporate protections to have that in place. Anyhow, uh, moving on, um, the next one is, the, is it, it potentially a longer discussion, uh, 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 6D discussion of the resolutions. Um, there's a bunch. And well, and I wasn't able to attend. There was a webinar, I think, yesterday. I'm signed up for the webinar on, I believe it's the fourth. So yeah, I have I not. I was on the one yet. yesterday. I was on okay. the one yesterday. I will tell you that I, I, I think it started at three o'clock. It was over 3 15. Oh. I mean, there's, there's not, it doesn't seem to be there's a lot of controversy. Almost, there was almost no questions asked, but we should probably walk through them. I think a lot of them are just, you know, bookkeeping things and. How do you want to do that, Phil? Do you want to go through just the summary like I'm looking at now? I, I, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, and that's what I have in front of me, actually. I mean, the first couple, really, there's really not much to, to talk about. I mean, the ones to talk about, if you want to have any conversation, would be that one there, the sunsetting of the interior design licensing, which we've talked about in the region, you know, at nauseum already. So I'm not sure there's much to talk about there. And then there's the, the one that um, really probably the other ones to talk about would be the one that reduces the fees from 6,500 to 1,000 from NCARB and the one that changes the term limits on the board from three years to two years. And if anybody has opinions on those. Wait, which would so, be number so, 07 and 08. Okay. Um, well, I, how about 04 for a second? Are we generally in agreement? Because I, you know, we're not one of those states that has a joint board of interior it's only 14 of 55 jurisdictions, as I recall. Right, I understand that. But so but what this says, if, if, with, if you're not familiar with it, is the resolution, which was passed in 2000, clearly states that NCARB is opposed to all the interior design legislation, et cetera, et cetera. All this is doing is eliminating that so NCARB can take a neutral stand and not be opposed to interior design legislation, basically. So was the background, because I remember we, we sort of thought it, of it as a threat to the profession. And, and so at this point, are we not feeling that it's that much of a threat anymore? I've not, honestly, uh, until you just said that, I have not heard that from the people I've talked to or on the call yesterday um, at all. I mean, there's some people who thought that, but I, I think that, I don't think it's a threat at all. And I think that, you know, there's still going to be legislation in, uh, opposed and candidly, NCARB's working with NCDIQ to kind of work together, and it's hard to try to work together if you have a re if you have a resolution that says we're opposed to everything you do. Right, and if anything, I think um, the states that do have interior design licensure, um, in some sense, you know, back up the the. Um, the meaningfulness of professional licensing because the states that don't have interior design licensure, you know, those folks, folks are competing with uh, people that don't have any kind of credentials and are really just decorators. So right. and it's not, we, we don't have, we don't have licensure in Connecticut. No, this doesn't right. take a proactive approach. It's, it's just, just a neutral a negative away. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm just wonder if it, I wonder if it becomes a cudgel, you know, that, 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 that those that want to change, or get licensure in Connecticut will say, well, NCARB doesn't oppose anymore, so why don't we just get licensure in the state of Connecticut now? First of all, I, I, I doubt that, and I'm not sure how many people from the interior design side are going to even know that we do this. I mean, although we are working with, I mean, I've been on committees where we're working with NCDIQ, and they're, so some people do know it for sure, but it's just really hard to say you're going to work in the sandbox together, but we're not going to let you play with our sand. I, I just, I don't see a downside to it. I mean, I think ultimately it's better for us to work, to learn how to work with them than to just completely be opposed to them. Um, and then it just becomes adversarial, which is what this resolution is. It's a very adversarial resolution. The one that's there from 2000. And I don't have it in front of me, so I don't know exactly, but I know it's very clear that it says we oppose everything you guys do. I'm trying to pull it up. Yeah, I'm trying to do the same thing, actually.
Was it five? Uh, no. Oh, four. Oh, four. Okay, sorry. Got it. Oh, yes, right. You were on this task force. I was on that task force. So you are the expert. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty adversarial. Again, all this is doing is taking that away. It's not taking a proactive approach. Yeah, I'm a little cynical, but you and I understand that. And believe me, I've, I've been cynical plenty of times. I just think I'm trying to take, you know, my cynical brain away right now and look at it, you know, in an unbiased way. You know, I did see, you know, I, I think I was the only member board member in the last version of this where, where who testified before the legislature, legislature committee about the last change that the interior designers made in Connecticut, which was in order to get a, I forget what it was, it's like to get a paper certificate or something like that. And right. it, it was, it was, it was quite the show that was put on, you know, with, Certain certain leaders in, in in the interior design community, bringing in uh, University of New Haven students to charm and wow the 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 the, oh, yeah, the no. members of the committee in order to get a change put through. I mean, it was incredibly disingenuous, and and this is what I saw in, in right. live and in and, person. And I mean, there are states in the country where they have seal where they literally the interior designers have seals. I know. And I think that's a probably likely something we'll see again in the future at some point. But well, interestingly, without getting too far down this road, I know at least one of the states that I know of, and I don't remember which one. It's it's a round seal for architects and a square seal for interior designers, so you can kind of see the difference if anybody pays attention. Okay. Anyway, so what do we want to do? Um, yes, we vote. Well, for. I think we should continue to review these. Or we either act, we can act on them individually or in some combination thereof. Um, That's fine. Uh, Let's just keep going through them and then we can figure out how sure. to act. Amendment of reinstatement of NCARB list of guideline and model law. So, this is the whole the huge model law initiative that was supposed to take a year or two, it took four plus years. Um, I have huge respect for all those that weathered this committee. Um, because they really rewrote everything. Yeah, my so understanding is, is it's not done. This is just the first step. This okay. is just to approve the multi-year task force work or, sorry. No, it's, it's not, not to no. approve. It's not to approve it's the to model approve law. The work they did. The work they did. Right. Okay. It's basically the first step in updating the model law. Apparently there's gonna be at least one, if not two more beyond this. But it's okay. just kind of, it, it and I don't, again, I don't have the details of it, but it clarifies a lot of the things that were in there. And, you know, there's quote unquote, no significant changes from what I was told yesterday. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with this. Okay. Um, so what are we voting? Okay, what are we voting on just to continue going? That, I think that they've done their work. Well, you're voting on you're voting on the changes they're proposing so far. But I but in the call yesterday, they said, excuse me, there'll be some more changes coming up. This is just the first step in updating the model law. I see. There are a bunch of attachments here for videos and stuff, and I uh, honestly did not review them all. It's kind of um, 202106. Omnibus censor of resolutions in conflict with current council policies. So this is just a bunch of stuff that that's kind of a cleanup of the of the policy of NCAR policies. Right, and you have to. I didn't, and I didn't do this, but there's apparently a, an uh, appendix that lists all the ones that are being. Um, I think it just cleans up a lot of the outdated resolutions. Yeah. This is the summary right here of the of the resolutions. Oh yeah, there you go. That's back to 1983. Yeah. Yep. 
Okay, I'm going to move on here. Any any other comments about that other than you know it takes a long time for to get to these things. Oh, this is the director term limits, and this has to do with trying to promote diversity, really, if well, I understand. It's, try, it's trying to promote two things, diversity and and also get people through and up quicker so that you don't have to spend as many years on the board to go through and become president if you want. Um, so it, it changes. Now, it changes the directors from three-year terms to two-year terms. It does not change the MBE's terms to two years, or, or the public or the public member. Correct. Can you? They did make that change and pulled those off. And Correct. what was the rationale for not including those two categories in the in the reduction in in redu, reduced Well, I think term? I think the rationale was that it's not as easy for us to get public members and MBEs to serve on the board. And they're not moving up through the ranks anyway. They're only going to be on the board for those two or three years. Um, whereas right. if you're a secretary or treasurer, you're still going to be on the board when you go from secretary to treasurer, et cetera, et cetera. So you have a much longer term on the board at the end in aggregate. And I think also the MBEs, there is some level of diversity. Um, the, the Really, the, the um, goal of this one was to get diversity moving up as correct as Phil had stated. So I thought that there had been discussion in about public members being allowed to uh, hold positions on the board, not just as, the, so a public member could in fact arise to president I think I don't even think that's true. well, Carol Briggs had became became uh, the regional director and then had to step down for personal reasons because she relocated out of Connecticut for a period of time. But she was and a regional could, director, I thought. You could ask Jennifer if they. No, 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 no. This, I might but... have that wrong. I don't think she was a regional director. She was a. No, I thought maybe she was. She was. I think she was, but I. No. So I, again, I wasn't there, but I think what was it possible that she was going to be? Well, I guess if it was the region that was voting her, yeah, she was a regional director. But I don't think you can go any further than just being a regional director if you're a public member. For, for what it's worth, when when NCARB publishes a call to serve on committees. Most committee, most committee membership requirements are um, licensed architecture. So when I look through that list, even as a public member, it's like, yeah, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. So if it's that exclusive on committees, it would seem to be pretty exclusive on regional and board membership as well. So, I mean, it's kind of, this has been discussed a lot. It's supported by the board 14 yeah. to zero. Jennifer Arbuncle was a big part of this. Yeah, well, interestingly, this one, with the, the one on the director terms is, not, is was not supported unanimously by the board. It was 11 to two. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't miss that. Do, were you familiar with the, any of I don't the objections? Know. I don't know, I'm just reading, I'm just reading this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who voted against it, but. Well, and we still aren't seeing diversity. I think the other thing that they should have discussed was um, instead of this marching through the ranks um, kind of thing, we need a more, uh, I guess, I know it's accepted, but it rarely happens. We need a more regular process where people are coming into whichever positions they're most interested in rather than waiting the 10 years. You know, this reduces it from three to two, but still. You know, then you can move to secretary, treasurer, for second vice president, first vice president. You know, it, it takes more than a decade. Um, right. And, so, and yeah, so Angela, along, the, along those lines, there is actually was another resolution 
that was not brought forward in that other resolution, which was um, 20, which is labeled 2021-H, was to consolidate positions so that it wouldn't take you as long to go through. So secretary treasurer would be one position, you eliminate second vice president. So they were eliminating basically two or three positions on the board so you can get yourself through faster. Right. But what you're saying, basically jump people. You got to be able to jump because that's what, yeah, yeah that's what happens. What can happen. It just doesn't. The AIA does it all the time. You've got directors coming in, you know, running it, for but president. It, but it, right it has now. happened. Christine has. Harden jumped. I would tell you if you guys know Dick Quinn, Dick Quinn was opposed every single time he ran by people running and he was jumped at one point. So, I mean, years ago, more people did it than they do now. I mean, I literally heard from um, some of my colleagues at AI National when I was talking about becoming more involved, you know, should, should I be on NCARB committees or AIA committees or whatever? And the immediate response was, well, NCARB's not diverse. So, you know. <laughs> if you want to have an off the record conversation about AIA and where you should be, I would love to have that conversation. Oh, I'm sure. Two bottles of wine, not one. <laughs> but anyway, it is allowed to jump. I just, I don't, I don't think consolidating positions helps because they need that many people to do the work. There, right. There's just a ton of work. You can't I guess my point was that there is conversation about what you're saying. There is a lot of conversation about how do we, how can we get this to work better? Yeah. I don't think anybody has the answer right now, but there is conversation going on about it. So in my mind, this is like a baby step. It helps um, take a chunk away from the issue. But. It helps in the whole logic of rotating people through the various positions is that so they're familiar with each of the jobs that people do so that by the time you get into the real leadership positions, you know what's involved behind all of that. So I agree with that too. Still, yeah, so that still, you know, I think what they're doing still maintains that concept. And even if you're not interested in being treasurer, you know you need that what information. the gig is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that you're not making unreasonable requests or expectations, you know, whatever else. So I think just NCARP suffered from, um, I guess the folks that can put the time in and become directors and officers nationally are typically just, these, these are the folks that look at our profession, you know, most firm leaders in large firms, which is where most of these people are coming from because they can afford the time, right. um, you know. Actually, are, I don't think that's necessarily males. true, Angela. A lot of like, like the, the a recent, Many are maybe, but but there's a lot of small practice people that that rise up. Uh, um, a few years ago from Nevada, um, Greg. Greg. Uh, Greg's a small. I didn't know that. Small yeah, firm. No, I didn't know. Uh, I, Terry I, I Albers, found that out small firm. Yeah, he's a relatively small firm. Yeah, but I mean, I think the point is, is that the profession is changing its its diversity profile. But it's going to take time, and a, a lot. There's much more diversity, with, uh, you know, lower in 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 lower experience ranks, and so so we're the the, uh, the board is trying to accelerate that. But the reality is, like you say, right now, if you look at senior level management in, in a lot of firms, it's going to it's 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 not going to have a very diverse profile. Right, and I I appreciate that you say that it's going to take time. But I have to completely disagree with that because when I went to school 30 years ago, it was 50% female and it shouldn't have taken this much time to even start seeing it barely chip away. If we don't do stuff that's radically proactive, what is time? Time's going to be another 50, 60, 70 years before it's diverse. So it- I'm, I'm not we, disagreeing with you, Angela. I yeah. Mean, I, so I, I'm going to disagree with you a little bit and say to you that in the last 30 years, the change was really minimal. And I think that in the last five, the change has been accelerated. And I think, I hope that you will see change faster and it won't be 50 years. And I think that a lot more people are, are at least talking about it and trying to push it in the right direction. I'm not saying it shouldn't be more radical. Yeah, that would be great. Um, but I do think that it's accelerated a lot faster than it was 10 or 15 or 20 years. It ago. has, and specifically with AIA. When I look at the slate of officers at AIA versus what's been going on at NCARB for the last few years, I'm just seeing a huge difference. So 
I don't know if it's, is there a stigma? Is there some, you know, other thing we need to do at NCARB to correct this situation? Well, what if anything is NCARB doing to recruit a diverse well, board? So good point. Now they're, they, and this was really interesting and very controversial. They, they are trying to um, help, I guess would be one word to use. They're trying to help individual boards within the states recruit diverse members. Um, so, yeah, and this is and where David I start to have can, a problem. Have yeah, a problem. so that they're getting into actual state government in there, that There's regard. a fundamental difference between NCARB and AIA. They are not the same, right? Oh, yeah. And, and NCARB is, is a central organization designed to level licensing requirements. Uh, AIA is a professional organization for anybody that wants to join it that's a member, an architect. Um, so, so when, when NCARB board decides they want to start influencing member states, NCARB exists because of member states. Uh, and, and that's my problem is, is, is sort of a state's rights, you know, pure state's rights issues. This is our territory. We can do whatever we, we can do to promote diversity. Our board is diverse in terms of gender, not in terms of race. Could we do more that way, perhaps, uh, in the future? Um, but, you know, NCARB, to, to me, sh it shouldn't be their role. This is just my opinion to start picking members for our local board. That's, 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 a, that's, that's what Connecticut should do. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, don't, I don't think you can really, I mean, AI runs their organization so drastically different. I really, I'm trying to bite my tongue on this, but um, that NCARB, so I don't think it's... <laughs> it's a good comparison of how the two organizations run. But anyway, I'm, I've said enough, so. Yeah, I want, I'm, I'll buy you that bottle of wine because I have no idea what you're talking about. But. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, no, I can't do it. I, I, yeah. Not I would, now, I'd not, be now. Happy not now, not now, no, some other time. Anybody <laughs> and have this conversation. Some other time, anyhow, okay, let's move on here. We, Cause this is, uh, we, we so this is a good first step. <laughs> Yeah, so the last one is a dues reduction. So they want oh, to yeah, reduce, yeah, yeah, dues reduction. Anybody yeah, they want to, to reduce the dues from sixty five hundred per, per state to a thousand, and um, apparently it's the 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 impact financially to the to the um, to the region is minimal to this to the organization. So wasn't there a thing when? I might be completely remembering wrong, but I remember there had been discussions about, um, this was more about dissolving regions because you also had a regional dues you had to pay and they were worried that um, if we ever needed to, so you can reduce the dues, but if we ever need to raise the dues in the future, it's incredibly hard to do so, right? So um, this is a drastic reduction. Like, are they talking about this is, forever and we're never going to need to pay them more yeah, than a thousand if you read it it, it well it, it's basically says that any increase um three years not less than three years if such resolution is adopted may so can you imagine that we go back to the governor and say oh yeah you know we got the dues reduced for three years but you know well, I think their point is, is that, you, you know, this gets back to how much money NCARB collects through licensure and how small a component this is and that the organization has such incredible reserves that I don't see that these going up. Their point is, is that the, the, the region solely relies on, on state, on regional dues to survive. And those regional dues basically, in our case, um, pay for the administrator, a fraction of that. And the balance is, is honestly... Is, is, is to set up these conferences and to pay for travel for members. We get about 50 cents on the dollar probably back in terms of if we actually utilize um, the travel for the uh, uh, regional meeting and for the, uh, you know, for the various meetings that, that are supplemented at this time by, by regional, uh, you know, by the, uh, the NECAR. So I trust the fiscal analysis. I just, if they ever want to come back and tell the states they've got to start paying 1500 or 2000, like 
you know, somebody's going to have to ask our governor if they're willing to do that, and it might not happen, and we might lose membership. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, is if you decide not to pay the dues, then you get kicked out of NCARB, and then and 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 then you have no, you know, you can't take advantage of uh, of the licensure pieces and all that. I mean, you know, I'm not worried about it. I, mean, I think this is great. So was it? I didn't. I didn't read all this detail. Was this passed by the board or recommended to? Oh yeah, be yeah. approved. Twelve to one. Oh, I see it now. I'm. I'm. Sh I can't believe they wouldn't have had this conversation. You know, where if, if this goes away, we states might struggle to get it reinstated. They have had the conversation, and they're convinced that it'll never go. They'll never raise it back. And and they're they also. I think. Look, I think it's a drastic cut. I would. If it was my call, I would say, look, cut it to 3,500. It's at the end of the day, as David said, this money's really minimal to the organization. So probably they'll never really need to raise it up again. And, and I think one of their arguments too, was that it helps, you know, every, a lot of the states are getting kicked back on the regional dues. And so if you, if you don't have to pay the state, the, the, the dues to national, then maybe it helps you with the regional. I think it can backfire because I think that, you know, now you're going to say, well, I'm only paying a thousand dollars to national. They're doing the exam, et cetera, et cetera. And, but I'm paying 5,500 to my region. So I think there's potentially a backlash there, but. No comment. I'm not on the board. In general, in general, as soon as people say, I'm going to save money, people are for it, but yeah. you know, so I suspect that most of the country is for it. That's all of them. That's all of them. Okay. Okay. So, um, just out of, uh, I'm gonna. What is it? Uh, I'm gonna move. I'll make a, a motion that I I I move that we accept resolutions one through three and five through. 10. Can I modify that? One, one's already been voted on. I'm sorry. One was the, was the, uh, the extension of the. Right, which was passed. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me, let me, my, my amendment, my, my motion hasn't been accepted yet. So I'll, I'll change the motion um, uh, to uh, two through um two and three and five through eight move to approve. Second. Second, I'll second it, Phil. All in favor? Aye. 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 Twiggler Ann? Aye. Oh, I said I said aye, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, so that's a unanimous. Got that, Bob? Right, I'm gonna make a motion that we um, approve yep. resolution 04. Second. Which one was four again? I'm sorry. It's on the interior design resolution. Oh, the interior design. A further discussion? There was Phil and David. Yeah. Uh, Phil, Phil moved, David seconded. On resolution four. On resolution four. Any further discussion? Okay, so vote. the vote is to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Lorraine, okay. Uh, opposed? Lorraine said yes. Oh, Lorraine said yes? Okay. Yeah. Okay, opposed? Aye or nay? Twig? I said aye. Sorry. Okay. So that would be four. A uh, motion passes. Uh, one. One. Uh, uh, nay. Four yays. Okie dokie.
technical term, okie dokie. Yeah. Um, David? Yes, sir. Can you, the, 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 can you, I'm sorry. The nay, what, uh, the audio kicked out. Which, who, it was a nay on which resolution? On four? On, on the, 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 yes, four, one. David hey. voted against it. Who did? David. Me. Okay. Yep. All right, that was the tough one, I think. Yeah. Um, so attendance at the annual business meeting, I believe in the next few days, the if you're planning to attend in person, uh, uh, you have only a few days to register. Um, I will not be attending. Phil is attending. Yeah, and I'm already registered. Book Phil is back. one of our member board members. Uh, um, I've, uh, Angela, I don't know where you stand uh, on this. Uh, you sure there is there is funding for you if you if you choose to go. I'm still thinking about it. I don't I don't think I can swing it, um, but I'll take the weekend to think about it. Yeah, because you, you might be able to maybe I would recommend that if you do, because I don't believe I think both Loran and Twig will not be attending. We do get a public member and then, so there'd only be like one in question, but um, I don't see that as an issue. You may just want to register and then decide later, <laughs> not, you know, just not book your travel yet or something. Or you can always, whatever. You yeah, decide. I'm just... oh, well, once you register, NCARB's doing the hotels themselves. Right. Once you register, they're going to book a room for you too. So. Yeah, but you can always, that can always, can. there's no cost to NCARB to book the room. I understand. I'm just thinking, you know, if there's, if it's still a, a floating thing, it's an option. Everything is floating right now. That's my problem. There's yeah. nothing in my life that's solid. <laughs> I'm definitely not going. That's solid. And um, I'm definitely not going. I, I may I may be a virtual attendee. Depends. I'll probably register as a virtual attendee since they don't even have to buy me a lunch. So, so David, who's going to be the voting delegate? You um, are Phil. I, I'm I'm going to suggest that 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 that. Uh, you I'm, I'm happy to do it but i think you need to send it in then to them and tell me that you want when is it. that i know that's not even due yet uh, Bob, I, have, you, I don't know what it's due Bob, you used to oversee that could you yeah. could you take a control of that piece please? yeah i have i i do have a there's a pdf that was sent out yesterday i think it's due like in a couple of weeks but i was, I was going to bring that up at the end of the meeting the board will so phil will be the uh representative delegate yeah but we're supposed to have a all, alternate as well is anybody planning on attending virtually for sure? I can't commit to the entire time. So just, I don't want to take up a seat when I'm pretty sporadic. There's no seat to take up virtually. Or not, yeah. I oh, I thought, like there, I thought there was a fee to attend virtually as no, well. No, there's not. No. no. I misunderstood. Okay. I will try. If I don't travel there, I will try to um, log on online. So why don't we make Angela the alternate? I'm sure Phil will, you know. Yeah, unless I have a heart attack that I'll be able to do it. So. <laughs> oh, don't God. say that. Don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. that, that or the plane crashes, it. whatever. Don't I'm not say that. Have a heart That's attack. even the plane's worse. plane's not going to crash. You know, I won't drink too much, so I'll be able to do it, you know. All right. I, I'll get the letter in. <clears throat> the minutes state that... Uh, Phil will travel safely and return safely. <laughs> I will. Promise. Okay. We vote on that <laughs> unanimously. Uh, all right. Moving on. Uh, we've d addressed item F. Uh, that would be Angela will be stepping down. And item G is a uh, request I have. Um, we need to remind licensees of their CE requirement. We told them last year during the renewal process, I'm recommending that we send out a memo this year with concurrent with renewal, which doesn't give us a lot of time. Now, last year, 
I think I wrote something and then eventually that was, it was decided somehow that that would be a message from the commissioner. Um, I'm not sure why that that shouldn't come from the board to remind people. I agree. So uh, I, I'm gonna, uh, uh, let's discuss that. Do, do we wanna, do, do, do we think it's a good idea to have a reminder go out, number one, and number two, you know, should should the board write that write that somehow and, and request that DCP to administer um, distribute that to current licensees? Yes, I do. Yes, we should have a reminder. Um, and I'm a little indifferent who it comes from, but I'd seen a reason. I mean, I think the board's the best idea. Bob, I mean, I know you, you can't. Is, do you see any 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 uh, issues with any of that? Any 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 anything you want to add? No, no, I think if if could you draft up if you could maybe we could work together and draft up a language for the memo and I could propose it to my director, we could send out a memo, you know, like we did. I mean, but my question is, and this gets back to discussion with Paulette, do we really need to ask permission? I mean, the only thing, the only permission is, 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 is allowing, is, is, is the board being able to reach out to current licensees? Well, the only reason, it, maybe permissions, maybe permissions is the wrong word, but the vehicle, uh, we're talking about issuing it through the department's uh, renewal notices. I mean, I assume that's one method, right? We can well, post it. It's on either. The I'm not saying it's an addition. It, the, 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 the the department maintains a database of licensees, right? Because that's how they're, you know, through e-license, they're reaching out, they're doing something. Correct. Yes. It's just from an IT perspective. If we issue something, we want to send it out to all those same people. Right somehow concurrently or before or after, it doesn't matter. I just think a reminder needs to go in this year so that yep. nobody, nobody can claim that they are surprised by our, by our statutes and regulations. Right. Right. It's been out there for a while. All right. Um, I don't even know if there's something we need to vote on. Maybe we should, maybe the board should vote. I move that, 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 the, 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 that, that, the chairman of the board write a letter on behalf of the board to remind all current licensees of the need to uh, uh, meet the, the statutory requirements for continuing education, which includes, you know, accumulating those for this year. Take out that last part. A second. Those so Angela? Yeah. Okay. In favor? I, Aye. I think that's unanimous. Bob, I'll I'll work with you to draft a, a, yes. a memo and yes. uh, and and I you know I think it's just something we issue. Yep. Um. I just and I will also write an article on corporate licensure for the AIA journal. And um, back to our comments of, or concerns of any person present today. Um, I did wanna add that um, AIA has been looking into um, educating our members on how to stamp and sign doc documents securely digitally. So we're- Thank you proceeding with um, providing our members with that resource. Right. I, I just have a, a quick question. It's only a, out of just personal interest. Looking at the continuing education requirements, I know AIA has always been very active in offering seminars and workshops and so forth. Have you, are they, continuing to be held virtually and have you noticed any change better or worse or the same um, in attendance is it more are people finding that it's more convenient or more yes. difficult to maintain the to 
comply with the CE requirements? I, th I think it's a lot easier virtually. Okay. And uh, Gina can elaborate with statistics, but it's been a very active year. Yeah, that's what I would have guessed. So nobody's going to push back and say, hey, I can't do this because. Of no, no, well, even, even no, no that's not true. It's, it's I would have guessed it's easier. better. It's definitely easier, but you're still getting the people who you make every complaint and excuse in the world. But to be honest, uh, Twig, for years, I've been getting everything for free online through various vendors with approved AIA because you can. there's, there's all kinds of, of opportunities to get CEs um, okay. without going anywhere, without getting in your car. Right. Yeah, yeah. pre-COVID. Pre but to Phil's point, there are easy, a few easy. members that just don't either know how to do that or... Or don't object to it on, the a, on, 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 to. on political grounds, and, and that, right. was, that was yeah, there's that always going to be people that board. make an excuse for what they're supposed to do and they don't do it. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. Those I'm people. sorry, I was going to jump in and just say too that uh, it's uh, as far as AIA members, I don't think there's ever been a concern about them having their credits though too for um, the state license because they're required to do. 12 HSW as AIA members anyway. So that's to David and, and Phil and Angela's point. They're going to get their credits no matter what because they needed to stay an AIA member. I know that. Thank All you. the other people that we're seeing a lot of non members that are coming to our webinars now because they realize they need credits through the state that they've never had to do before because they weren't AIA members. So that's where the difference is going to be. And I think that's where the, the difference is going to be from the state level to see how many of those that have never had to do credits before are going to do them because it's required now for your state license. Right. And they, they must only be licensed in Connecticut then because most all the states around us require it. I would have thought that and I would have thought that it'd be easier for people rather than more difficult. But Thank you. Um, any other comments? And Gina, glad you're with us today. Uh, good to hear from you. Um, I have a, uh, a question for the board. Uh, we need to have a vote on who has the best background. I move that Lauren Askloff has the best real background, the neatest bookshelf there. No seconds. Okay. Feels, you know, I like Twig's uh, skylight. I mean, I, I, I'm in a sunroom. Uh, that's pretty cool. A am I the only one who's working in their office? I think I think uh, yeah. Lauren's in her office. No, oh, it's, it's that's like, the home office. Uh, I, I, honestly, I never I haven't missed a day in my office yet. So <laughs> next 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 time I'm going to compete from my from my other room. From my bookshelves. Okay, everybody. Also, next time, assuming July is virtual, I'll be competing from South Carolina on the beach. So, oh. that sounds good. All right. With a Corona on the on your toe. In your... You know. <laughs> all Corona all the time. All right. Very good. Um, all right, folks. We'll reconvene in July, I guess. Yeah. Um, have two it's good holidays. Oh, and I love it. one thing. I don't know if that's going to be virtual or in person. I don't know that the department's made a decision, and I don't think it's up to us. I think that gets into the executive orders and everything like that as to what can happen in terms of these kinds of things. So at some point, Bob, I guess we're going to be informed as to what's going to happen with that. Yeah. Yes. Right. So along those lines, I was I wasn't kidding by the way. If it's virtual, if it's in person, I'm going to be in South Carolina. Um, but I'm happy to call in if it happens. And that's what we've done in the past. It's had call-ins. I'm not, you know, so yeah, that, that I'm happy be, to call in. Yeah. If there, do we want to talk about this? Is there a compelling reason to meet in person? I, I don't think it's our choice is what together. I'm, yeah, I don't think it's our choice, Twig. I think it, oh, it wow. has to do with, you, you know, how boards and commissions are established under state law and 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 what the what the meeting requirements are i think so we're going to have to get okay. um i don't I, so I don't think we can say unless they tell us you can choose i think we have to wait and see what the department says and i, I think see. we'll have to get clarification okay. from through bob as to how that's going to work out okay 
I'm happy to get together with everyone, but I don't miss the drive to Hartford. To understand. Because I have to wake up even earlier than I, more than I overslept today. Understand. <laughs> Can I add a last comment? Because I don't know if you asked for final comments. Final comments. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to congratulate Tom uh, and Brian who were on the call on their licensure. Uh, this is Gina Calabro. I'm the executive director for AA Connecticut. And Tom had a question about certificates. Um, we do not do, we actually, AIA has uh, donated the service to supply the certificates to all new, new uh, licensures, but we do not uh, do that until the end of the year. So we wait until everyone, until the year ends. And then in January, uh, we have a, a small reception. Um, we invite all the ALB members of their board to it, as well as the commissioner has joined us in the past. And 2022, we're crossing our fingers as we move on, it will be in person again. And at that time we present certificates. If you're not able to make that event, we will mail a certificate out to you, but it won't go get to you until January of 2022. Right, but that's not licensure. I think Tom might've been asking about when can he get his stamp and um, card, you know, registration card. So that's through the department. That's oh. That'll be orchestrated through Bob Cosmich. I actually have to jump off to another yeah, meeting. He said now, re but... receive a certificate. Yeah, that's the certificate is just a formal yeah. thing, Tom. That's not, it's, it's a, we just do it once a year, as Gina said in January. Um, but that's not your approval to practice that, that those materials, your instructions will be received by, um, from sure. Bob. Right. shortly right there's a process that i have to go through with all the newly licensed newly approved uh it's an automatic process i have to go into our licensing database he'll receive a letter from the department with instructions on paying your initial license fee kind of get the ball rolling it'll all be explained just give me about two hours <laughs> <laughs> very good well it's 10 29 which puts us right on time good meeting everybody Move to it. Second. Good Everybody to see everybody. Back. Good to see you too. Bye. 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 Thank you. Enjoy Go the weekend. Well. Bye. Thank you.